Travel is one of life's delights. It's enriching, rewarding and fun. As an extreme light traveller myself, I fly and travel with carry-on luggage only. This is really useful for what I'm going to talk about today, which is how to plan and pack for a small group tour. This is my friend Josie. She's an experienced traveller who's made many long-haul trips to Europe and elsewhere. But recently she was looking for a different experience, which is why she decided to go on a small group tour. But what is a small group tour? Well, as its name implies, a small group tour means traveling with a hand-picked group of people who have the same interests as you. There's a small group tour for every interest, photography, painting, diving, fishing, food, culture, history, and more. I guess there's going to be a small bus involved, which is the way Josie traveled. Together with 11 others, She travelled through the heart of Australia, covering thousands of kilometres and visiting places not always accessible without the knowledge of the small group tour operator. Josie wanted to get away from it all, eat outdoors with food cooked in the open, sleep under the stars, experience the Australian bush, but most of all, Josie wanted to paint. Josie went on an en plein air tour. Yes, I had to look it up as well. It's French and it means in the open air. Josie went on an on plan air tour with a group of artists, sketching and painting the beautiful Australian desert. This is one of her draft illustrations. But what about packing for a small group tour? Most tours of this kind only permit one small bag, usually weighing a maximum of 12 kilos. And it has to be a soft bag without wheels so that it can fit into the bus easily. Are you ready for that? My advice is to think about where you're going to go, how long you're going to stay there, and what exactly will you be needing to wear. And don't forget your toiletries, or maybe these aren't as important in the bush, but you might need specialist tools and appliances, like cameras or fishing rods, or in Josie's case, paint easels. Make sure your small group tour operator gives you instructions on what you need to take with you and how you need to pack them. So the secret is in getting the right bag. As I said earlier, it's better to use a bag without wheels, like a duffel bag. Research and buy the lightest possible bag you can find. Don't be swayed by lots of extra pockets and pouches, as those add weight. My travel bag weighs only one and a half kilos, which means I can pack in a lot of clothes and other essentials. Working from a packing list is helpful, and weighing everything is really useful. I know that sounds a bit onerous, but once you've built up a list of regular items, you can just refer to your pack list for your next trip. When I asked Josie about the weather, she said they experienced both hot and cold climates and it was unexpectedly cold at night. So remember to pack and wear layered clothes. Lightweight wool t-shirts and jumpers form part of my travel wardrobe. And remember, pack a puffer jacket. This lightweight yet warm coat is ideal when travelling light into cold climates. So how did Josie enjoy her trip? Well, you can listen to our interview at Plane Pack to find out more, especially as Josie gives some really great tips on what to take with you. But I think she had a grand time, and as for me, I'm planning my next trip already. I'm Slobodanka Graham. I hope you've enjoyed watching this short video and that it's helped you think about going on a small group tour. Visit me at plainpack.com.au for more tips, advice and stories about travelling light. Until the next time, happy light travels!